Today I have the pleasure of speaking with George Bennett from Rainbow Rare Earths, and this is what I loved about preparing for this interview. Low capital intensity, low operating cost, larger long-term opportunity. So where should we start, George? Well, Tracy, thanks for having me on your interview, and I appreciate you taking the time out to give me this opportunity. So all those things you say about Rambo's project in Pedalabor are true. We are very low capital intensity for a typical rare earth development project. We are circa $300 million of capex to build a plant that's going to separate NDPR to 99.5% purity. And we're going to produce the SEG Plus group, which will have our heavies in it, dysprosium and terbium. Fortunately at Rambo, at the Pedalabor project, we have a very, very strong basket, 29.1% of our basket is an NDPR, which is one of the highest baskets in the world for these two key elements in permanent magnets. And we've got economic quantities of dysprosium and terbium. And we'll be producing this in the SEG Plus group, which is similar to what Linus have done in their whole production career to date. They've separated the NDPR themselves, and they've produced an SEG Plus group, which they sold to China for many years. So only in the last two or so months, that Linus have commissioned their heavy rear earth separation plant in Malaysia, and they're going to be doing this themselves. A hundred million market cap, that's in pounds, listed on the London Stock Exchange. You're not on everybody's watch list, and I think you should be, because as you corrected me coming up the elevator, you have been achieving milestone after milestone for the last several years since you became CEO, and you just announced some news this morning. Can you take us through that? Yes, so we've just an announced, announced that we finalise our serum depletion step. All rare earth projects look to deplete serum out of their feed stream going into their final separation circuit because this is basically a waste of money. Serum is a very, very low value product. But it, uh, so we've been able to achieve 65% depletion of our serum content in our feed stream, which means we have to treat about 26% less metal in the final separation circuit. So this bodes well for the, a smaller final separation circuit, which is better capex, better opex. As you mentioned, uh, opex is also very low in the rare earth space. We will be separating rare, um, our rare earths at an equivalent value of below $13 a kg. In fact, we will be, we'll be less than that when we publicize our optimized numbers. You're the first commercial recovery of rare earths from phosphogypsum. Is that pronounced properly? That's correct. So. We're not your typical rare earth uh, so-called miner. We're more of a chemical processing plant with IP and tech at our fingertips. What we've been able to do is we are taking rare earths out of a phosphogypsum waste residue. Now, this waste residue is, is generated when you mine phosphate hard rock. There are rare earth elements in the phosphate hard rock, but not economic uh, to mine just the phosphate rock for those rare earth elements. But you take this phosphate slurry and you concentrate it up through a flotation process and you produce a high-grade phosphate slurry. And that high-grade phosphate slurry was pumped next door into a phosphoric acid plant owned by the uh, chemical conglomerate in South Africa called Sassel. In the production of uh, phosphoric acid, which is the key ingredient for all fertilizer worldwide, you add sulfuric acid and you add heat. And in this process, you generate a waste residue called gypsum, phosphogypsum. And the rarest the port with the phosphogypsum into these waste stacks that we have in South Africa at Palaborba, where we've got 35 million tons of this waste residue, grading at 0.44% TREO, total rare earth oxides. Now this is significant because if you look at iron and clay projects, iron and clay projects normally grade at 0.04 to 0.8% TREO. So we're in the order of magnitude 6 to 10 times higher grade than iron and clay projects. And like iron and clay projects, we've got a very, very low mining cost. In fact, we've got no mining cost effectively. All our resource sits above the ground. You've got no geological risk. You've got no mining risk. And basically, we'll, we'll reclaim this, this phosphogypsum with, uh, with um, hydraulic cannons, wash it over a screen, and then into our, into our process plant. Also, a key thing in, in the rare earth projects is that you, your first stage is producing a mineral concentrate, which is a lot of uh, stages, at, which is a stage where lots of projects uh, stop at. And you have you know, MP Materials in America recently only stopped at a concentrate. But then before you can separate the rivers out of that concentrate, you have to crack it into a chemical form. And cracking involves adding sulfuric acid and you add heat. And in South Africa at Palaboa, when that uh, phosphate slurry was put into the phosphoric acid plant, you add sulfuric acid, you add heat, two key ingredients for cracking rivers. So our 
stockpile in South Africa is actually a chemically cracked stockpile. So as a result, two-thirds of our flow sheet in Rainbow comes at zero cost to us before we start separating the rares out. And that's what we've decided to do. We're going all the way through to separated rare oxides and NDPR, and we'll produce an SEG plus group, which we'll, we will then um, look to um, enter into offtake contracts. But at some stage, we then have that flexibility to go and build a heavy separation plant where it suits us. It could be the US, it could be on European soil, could be Japan for that matter. But whoever wants to help fund Rain Rainbow with this part of uh, the, the separation, we'd be happy to entertain those ideas. So you must have a lineup for offtake agreements. Are people knocking on your door watching you to see where, what you're going to do next? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so since the RIA conference in Montreal a couple of months ago, we had a significant increase in offtake discussions. And I mentioned in those offtake discussions that there needed to be a floor price in all offtake discussions going forward. And I was very pleased to see shortly after that conference, the Department of, of Defense in America announced the offtake deal with um, MP materials in, in the US where they had, have a floor price of $110 a kilogram for NDPR in, in that contract. And, and the Australian government has also come out in support a few weeks after that that deal to say they're also now going to entertain floor prices for critical minerals. So I think this is reality now in the industry and $110 per kg for NDPR has set a benchmark. We saw the Chinese since that deal was announced where NDPR was trading at circa $59 or $60 a kilogram, the price moved up to about $82, $84 a kilogram today. So the Chinese are allowing the price, but we all know the Chinese price is manipulated and hopefully the market is paying attention now to that. Well, I'm certain the market is paying attention to it, um, but South Africa, what are the advantages that you have for being in South Africa? Well, apart from the fact that it's a brownfield site, so we've served by rail, we've served by road. It was an existing chemical processing facility, so we've got power, we've got water, we've got reticulation of that power and so forth. So that's also adding to our low capital intensity of the project. But we've got very, very um, low um, uh, wages, obviously, which are a significant part of any plant. And we've also got uh, access to all the key reagents we need on, on our doorstep in South Africa. And that's adding um, to the low OPEX that we are showing in our project. I think where I was going with that is um, a lot of people don't appreciate what South Africa has for rare earths in general. And it's an amazing and extraordinary potential area for getting the rare earths we need for North America. Well, yeah, we have obviously the Pal Palabora project and we have a couple of other development projects in South Africa in the rare earth space. But South Africa is very rich in mining. We used to lead the world in mining for many, many years. We're still the deepest underground miners in the world. And we've still got amazing engineering and technology available to us with the skills in South Africa. And this is on our doorstep at a very low, low cost for Rainbow. And the Rainbow team is very, a very, very experienced team. As a team, we've designed and built over 80 process plants around the world and every conceivable mineral you can think of, except a rare earth mine, because no one's done that yet in the last 20 odd years, apart from Linus. So what should shareholders be looking forward to in this upcoming quarter? So we've um, announced that we've achieved a very, very um, good results for, for our mixed rare earth product, which is going into the final separation circuit. As I announced about three weeks ago, we have um, incorporated continuous iron exchange into our front-end process flow sheet, and that has reduced our volumetric flow of pregnant leach solution with the rare earths in it coming into the continuous iron exchange from 340 cubes an hour down to less than seven cubes an hour. And that, as I mentioned, bodes very well for our final separation circuit, which we're busy costing and designing now, and that will be announced probably within the next two months. I've also announced that we will be releasing results of some optimization studies on the front end part of our process flow sheet, which is 90% of our CAPEX and OPEX, and we anticipate those um, optimization results to be bene very beneficial to the project. So there's a lot of good news coming out over the next three to four months. I've secured um, almost a mirror image of Palaboa in Brazil with, with, uh, at a place called Uberaba with Mosaic, the global fertilizer business. We're going to be taking rares out of their phosphogypsum in Brazil. The beauty about the Brazilian project, it's higher grade than Palaboa. It's longer life. 
the feedstock for the phosphoric acid mines in Brazil is over 40 years in life. So you've got a high grade, long life project coming on stream very quickly after um, Rainbow's Palabora project. We signed the MOU with Mosaic 18 months ago to 50-50 JV this project. And, um, and I'll be announcing the results of that initial feasibility study also within the next two months. And of course, the Brazil government we've been watching for some time, and they've been fast-tracking critical mineral mm. projects. Have they been supporting you? Well, as I said, our partner is Mosaic, the global fertilizer business listed in New York. So I'm fortunate I don't really have to deal with the Brazilian government per se, but I have had approaches already from the DFC in, in Brazil, which is part of the US government, and also from uh, some, some Brazilian uh, banks to support the project in Brazil. So we've, we've sparked the attention in Brazil, and once we announce the results of the feasibility study, I think you'll see a massive increase in the tension around our project in Brazil. As I've mentioned, very long life, higher grade than Palabora, it'll be larger, and it'll make Rainbow the only real company in the world that I'm aware of that's got country diversification and project diversification. And now for a fun question, George. Um, I was looking through your background, and you've done so many things in your life. Can I ask you what talked you into moving into the rare earth sector? Well, in 2019, Rainbow was um, uh, needed refinancing, and I was asked by the chairman to come in and help refinance it and become the second biggest shareholder at the time, which I did. And it was something that I was already, even then, I was... I realized was going to be a critical mineral going forward was in the rare space because as my previous company which I sold which was MDM Engineering, we had done two f uh, feasibility studies in the space just before I sold it in 2015 and that was the Peak Resources Rare project in Tanzania and I also did the Loftal Rare um, bank uh, Bankable fe Feasibility Study in, in Namibia and having been involved in those feasibility studies, I saw that this was a mineral that going forward was going to become very critical. So when I saw the opportunity, I took it with both hands. Prices for rare earths, what do you see? Can you make any comments on where you see the prices going over the next year? As I mentioned, we've seen prices pick up from the doldrums, uh, quite rightly so, and we circa $82 for NDPR. But we have seen a bifurcation of the pricing between Chinese and Europe. We've seen Dysprosium and turbium for the last four months trading in Europe two to three times higher the price than the spot price in China. So I think we're going to see a real price being set over the next 12 to months to two years, and I, and I see those prices being higher than where they are now. And you know I'd be very happy with $110 a kg for NDPR, 120. At, at those kind of numbers, Rainbow is a highly, highly um, profitable business. We've got over 75% EBITDA. And at $110 for NDPR, we would make circa $190 million of EBITDA per annum on a $300 million capex build. So you can see it's a very, very attractive project. And we have a $50 million commitment by the DFC, which is the U.S. government, into project equity in the construction phase of our project, which we are looking to be constructing in 2027. So we're near term in construction, and that means we'll be in production in 28. So we're a near term producer as well in the space. For everybody interested in finding out more about Rainbow Rare Earths, please go to the following website. Thank you, George. Thank you, Tracy.